Hey, what's up my construction entrepreneurs? Tyrone back here from the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services, where we help individuals uh, get their contractor's license and also learn how to start their business and get to you know the next level in their business. So we're helping um, people that are starting out, we're helping small to, to mid-sized contractors. Uh, helping them implement different systems, um, uh, add to their estimating department, uh, increase their sales, their pro pro uh, productivity, and just become more efficient in what they're doing so they can get better and better and get to that next level <clears throat> and operate at a different status, more profitable status. And that's what we do, okay? Um, once again, I'm Tyrone Jones, uh, founder of the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services. All right, so what we're going to go through today is I'm going to actually do an estimate. Now, I didn't prepare anything. I'm, I'm sort of giving it to you raw. Um, I didn't go in there and, and grab different estimates and, and make them, you know, uh, get them ready. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we move on along this process. So if just not something that you need to see or you need to hear about, then you can go ahead and exit out, maybe jump to the next video. Uh, this one is, is we're going to. Uh, pull up a job, um, pull up the plans, <clears throat> go through a takeoff. And I have similar jobs that I have done of similar type type projects that I'm going to pull up. And it's going to make me a lot, lot it's going to make it a lot easier for me to, to get that work done and get this estimate done. Uh, still may take some time though. Okay. So let's go on this journey together. So Bear with me while I share my screen. All right. I may get a phone call or two, so you may have to pause for a little bit. I got emails coming in as well. So excuse me if I got to take a little break and, and, and check my email and respond to, to my partners or some neighbors out there, okay? All right. Um, so here's a, a Sam's Club. You know, this was sent in by Austin Jones. And then now, mind you, there's a lot of contractors out there. It's like, hey, where do I find work after I get my license? Right. Where do I find work after I get my license? Where you hustle, you just like you found the work when you were unlicensed, you go and find the work being licensed. Now, a lot of us are scared to take it up to that next level because we jump from uh, one level to the next level, right? And, uh, you know, if you, once again, you got to actually be a construction entrepreneur and starting your own business, then uh, you have to take that leap. You know, eventually you're going to be forced to take that leap. Okay. Hold on there. Let me look at something here. I like to put uh, on some, uh, some good stuff in the background here. Why I want you to right now think get some work done, okay? All right, so um, I'll just cast it to my, uh, my uh, TV nearby. Anyway, so we got this job here, it's a Sam's Club, and it's a sack, right? So this is quite a bit of way, right? Hold on here. Put out a great product, test and try it all, use data, use your intuition, test and learn, test and learn, test and learn, and this is just, All right, so um, all right, so um, let's go through it. So we got this job from uh, uh, um, Sacramento to Sam's Club. So let's go through it. So here it says uh, view project files here. Let's open this up. See what happens here. All right. So it's pulling up. So here's the file here, right? Uh, no file selected. So you click here. Now, um, one thing I want to talk about is this. It, it took me a long time to be able to do an estimate from my, my, my laptop. I'm, I'm literally on my laptop, right? Now I have a plotter. I actually have a plotter at, um, at the office. I also have a plotter here at my house. Um, so I have a plotter here so I can literally print out these plans, but why, when, you know, why spend that money on a project that you don't even have yet? I print out plans once I get awarded with that job. Okay. And then I'll print out different sizes of it. I print out the, uh, what's the, 
11 by 17. I print that out for them to have out there in the field. Uh, if it's, if it's, uh, something that we can have out there or I'll print out the larger set, you know, the, the three by four set and then give it to, uh, my foreman or my subs, you know, I'll print out plans for my subs as well. They don't have to worry about doing that stuff. So, um, getting to a place where you're comfortable, uh, bidding on work, uh, on the laptop is, is, is crucial. Now, what makes it hard is um, I used to use um, PDF, right? And I, I'll use the, the the tools on PDF. We can we'll see if we're still able to use those tools, okay? And I'll I'll show you how I go about doing that and how I'm able to do that. And that's just using simple tools uh, that's provided to you for free, okay? Um, and 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 back in the day, I used to print out plans. I used to lay them across the table. Um, I had to have markers, and and if I didn't have markers, then I go and buy them. Uh, and then I had to have a digital uh, scale, um, and I had to have a, a architect ruler, and uh, and all these things to 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 get an estimate done. And you don't really need all that, you know. Stop stop being fancy with it. Okay, you don't have to be all that fancy with it to get the numbers done. Just pull it up, smash on it, get it done, write it up, send that bad boy off, okay? All right, so uh, what we want to do is uh, to get to a place where we want to be able to uh, uh, do some takeoffs here. We want to download this bad boy, okay? All right, so to download it, let's close this out. I need to select all of them. Now download, right? <laughs> So it's going to show up here. And then when it's ready, it's good. But in the meantime, so now on this particular set of plans, what I'm going for is the uh, site, site plans, okay? I'm going to go for the concrete and asphalt here. Oh, oh, what's this one here? So I'm going to go for the concrete and asphalt here, okay? Right? So... Right. So what do we see here? It's sort of light here, right? Sometimes too, let's say if I have a set of plans and I just, they're light, I can't really see them. I'll print out that sheet. You know, I, I would, don't, don't get me wrong. I won't hesitate to print out a sheet if I can't actually, you know, view it here and, and darken it here. Then I'll print out a sheet and I'll darken it as it come out my plotter. Um, and um and and i'll do my takeoff from there you know um and then i'll usually do a takeoff with a with a pencil or something like that now mind you now now let's let's get this clear too right i, I it's not a one size fit all system on what i'm doing right if i was to do a foundation right um uh, a foundation and, and this is why it's good to have an estimating system and an estimating system that has a takeoff tool okay like plan swift um, uh, some of these other on center, you know, um, uh, uh, stack estimating, they allow you to download these plans and color code them and do your takeoff while you're doing your estimate. That's why it's good to have a system like that, especially if you're doing like foundation work, drywall framing and things like that, because there's so many parts to this where on the foundation, you may need to call out every anchor bolt, right? Every stab 22, um, um, uh, every section that's, that's a gray beam and, and things like that, right? You may need to call out those sections, highlight them and, and, and account for those separately. Okay. For, uh, this type of work, I, I don't need all that. Okay. And then I'm familiar with it as well. So I think we're done with the download here. Let's, uh, let's open, see what that does. Okay, boom, that opens. Let's open this up. Boom. Additional. See, this says additional project info. Oh, let me see if you guys actually can see what I'm seeing here. No, you can't. So uh, I just pulled up another screen to where it already downloaded. And um, I'm actually opening up the plans. 
and I'm going to link you to that, that next shared screen. So I got it open. Okay, so let's share that screen now. So now we are, okay, oops. So now we are here, we got the plans downloaded. You should be able to see that screen. Let me make sure. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so we're good. You should be able to see my screen here. So we're here on the screen um, and, um, oh, I see what it did here. So we wanna close this out, give us more room here. And what it did here is just actually just opened up one sheet. See how it says there's one of one here. So what I need to do is I need to go back because it just opened up not the entire set, you know. Okay, so let's go back here. So this is plans here. Okay, here we go. So civil. They got it separated now. Let's go with civil. Let's see here, see if I can open. Uh oh. So there's another sheet that popped up. Let's get them all open. All right. So I'm just let me see what you what you can see here. So I'm just opening them all up, okay? Getting them all open here. And we're gonna really dig into here, right? There's quite a bit of sheets here. Now this one here, we can, now mind you, also too, since I'm familiar with this, right? I know what's entailed in, in all this work, but also too, you, you have to remember to, um, to read the specs, you know? You, you have to read the specs for every project. Stop just jumping into these projects and not reading the specs, and then you know you you can you can lose big time not reading specs. So the process with with this is is you read the specs, and you're 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 supposed to take the um, the insurance section of the specifications, and sometimes some projects the specifications are on the plans. Some, some projects don't have a specification book. Some put them on the plans, you know? There's been projects where I've seen them, they were actually on the plans. So you may find them there, right? Um, uh, but read the specs. Take the insurance section of the specs and make sure you send that over to your, your agent. So you can make sure that your, your insurance covers that, um, the requirements there. Okay. Let me let me get a little bit of coffee. Hold on. All right, so, um, you know, review those specs, look at those, uh, and then sometimes they send you questions for the project, questions that were sent in, or questions they actually, the GC actually sent to the owner, right? So uh, on this particular project, this is a Sam's Club, as we know, and I'm bidding as a uh, sub, okay? Um, the GC is, those. a lot of those projects are special invites, so you have to be a special invite proved through uh, Walmart, Walmart's own Sam Clubs, uh, to be able to bid on those projects as a GC, okay? So um, uh, we're not approved. Uh, none of my uh, uh, partnerships are approved. So we bid on it as a sub. Easy work. I love it. So let's look at this here. So a um, lot of things are going on here, right? So, and, and this is what's key with knowing how to read a plans. And, and, and knowing about plans is, is great, right? Um, knowing how to read plans is, is key. So all these sections here, if you can see this here, all these sections here 
is uh, somewhere on each sheet and it tells you what it is and what you're actually looking for, okay? Um, and sometimes depending on your trade, your trade may be in other sheets as well. So like sometimes a lot of times for these, uh, these uh, Sam's Clubs and these Walmarts, um, I have concrete work that's dealing with the plumbing side. So I have to go into the plumbing plans to look at different cleanouts that they may be uh, removing, toilets that they may be eliminating or adding in, and um, and I have to provide a a number to do uh, the demo, you know, and to pour back the concrete. And a lot of times when you're dealing with uh, someone else's trade where you're going and doing the work, uh, a lot of times you know uh, you want to avoid doing the backfill. And we're just talking about concrete and asphalt here. You want to avoid doing the backfill, okay? Um, and uh, and I'll just do the demo, right? They'll lay it out. I'll do the demo. Then I come back and pour it. They'll do the backfill, the uh, the compaction, uh, the subgrade, and everything like that, inspect it and everything like that. Hold on, let me get this coffee. Good cup of coffee is always good, right? You gotta, gotta continue to go with this. All right, let's get to it here. Okay, so I'm looking here. I got uh, uh, this is mainly the site plan. Okay. What's, mm -hmm. Site plan. Power in Road, East Stockton Boulevard. Uh, this is in, I believe, Sacramento, right? Was this Sacramento? Okay. All right. So I don't see uh, this here. I'm going to jump to the next sheet here. Uh, well, let's go back here. Let's look here. Let's, let's look here. So we got a lot of things that's going to be going on here. Number one, um, striping, seal coat, signs. Truncated domes area, existing demo. Now, sometimes as I'm reading through these sections here, I just glance through them so I can actually see what's here and and uh, kind of get a feel of what's going to be going on here. Um, as I see here, there's on this side the legends, proposed concrete. Uh, there's some milling, some overlay going on. Um, uh, there's some truncated domes, asphalt. Uh, some striping and seal coat area, okay, and then uh, some grade breaks there, right? And look here now, uh, depending on what, what type of architect is involved in this, a lot of times you will find, especially if you know how to read plans, you'll see sometimes these architect engineers they just copy and paste. So sometimes, even though they have a list of these like demo notes here and legends, you'll find legends that are on sheets and they have nothing to do with the plans. Okay, so don't let don't get hung up by that. Don't let that stump you or anything like that. Okay. All right, I want to make this as big as possible here. So let's go here. So look at here. So what we got here is so looks like one and two C two. Okay. What is C two? Wish I can make that that section up there bigger so this is so this is c2 right and they're saying uh one and two right so let me see here what's this one uh, c4 five six i got seven a sometimes you'll see sheet two a and things like that sheet three a so this is sheet two Okay. Let's get the hand here so we can pull over here. 12, look at that. So 1, 3, 12, 26, 26, 25, 17, 14, 21, 21, 4, 25, three seven eight so you know these boxes here is what is what you need to pay attention to and call out existing conditions to scale here now one of the things I, I i i sometimes do here um 
if I if I can here. So I will um, look at these areas. Say here, this is number three. Got to put a um, a new uh, looks like peg graph in there, right? I don't know what twelve is, but let's say three. Let's see if uh, there's tools that are in in here. If you notice here that you can actually use. You can mark this page up. Um, you can change it. You can sign it, right? You can take a measurement tool. Now, the measurement tool got a little funky lately. Um, I noticed. And that's why I was using some of my other uh, uh, programs because this tool was not allowing me to go around curves anymore or different angles. It was just literally going straight across. And I don't know if I was doing something different here or what the deal was, but if you want to do measurements here, you select this, this the, the measurement tool, okay? Then you right click, okay? Uh, then you click the, uh, the ratio, right? The scale ratio, and then, um, so it's, so you, you find, you, you, you see what the scale was on that, right? So let's go back here. So, Right, so what is the scale? The scale for this area, and sometimes you got to realize, sometimes you got to zoom out. Different scales for different areas here. You want to make sure you're in the same area. See, here's a scale, here's a scale here. Looks like they're all the same, right? But there's a different scale here too. You know, look at this one. So you, you don't want to get confused here. So there's one in, uh, one inch equals 80 feet, okay? Over here, there's another section, and you want to not get confused with that. One inch equals 10 feet. I think below here is the same thing. One inch equals 10 feet. So repair plan, right? So existing and repair. So we know this is existing, and this is how they want it to look here, okay? So we're going from existing to repair plan. So they're both the same. One inch equals 10 foot. So let's go to our tools. Let's just see if we can actually use this here. We may not be able to use it. I'm not sure. You click measuring tool, right click. We want to change it. One inch equals 10. 10 feet right here. I'll leave the precision precision the same. Boom. So um, um, so you see how it just goes across there. Let me see if I can, um, let's see here. So let's just do this one here. Well, we do a distance here. See this here? It's not allowing me to do, before it was allowing me to, Let's see if I can figure this out real quick. There you go. So I figured it out there, okay? So I had to turn that ortho off, okay? So anyway, so here it is. Cancel measurement. All right, so let's cancel this one out too, right? All right, so we got that figured out. So there's different measurement tools here. If you can see this here, there's a, a area, square footage, and a straight line measurement, okay? Um, and it allows you to measure areas here, okay? And that's what I normally do. It looks like this is cut off a little bit, so it's probably on another sheet, okay? I'll measure it and you will get the square footage that's in here. Okay. And I, I, I don't worry about being off a little bit. Okay. Um, especially with this tool here. Um, uh, I don't think it's completely accurate. If you can go out to a job site and, you know, look at it. A lot of times I'll pull up Google Earth as well so you can actually look down there and actually see stuff and then with google earth you can do measurements as well too so here it is this job is in sacramento i'm bidding on it i'm not going to sacramento to do a site takeoff that's a waste of my gas waste of my time waste of my energy 
I can do plenty of bids on, you know, try versus me driving up there and trying to trying to do that or paying someone up there to go and and take measurements, right? So, um, so let's look at this here, right? Let's look at this Cancel measurement. Okay, so we got that tool there. Uh, you know about that tool there, and that's what you can actually use there. We figured out how to change it and everything like that. So existing conditions is that. Let's bring this over here. Hopefully that's out the way. So what we got here is existing conditions. This is how they want it to look. So what I'm going to do here is let's just do this here. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull up. Oh, pull up Google Earth. Oops. <laughs> So let me share with you real quick. So I'm on Google Earth right now. And what I'm going to do is jump in between screens here. So I'm trying to see where this, this uh, address is at. So um, Sam's Club in Sacramento. Let's look at this here. So it's um, uh, so it's 8250 Power in Road in Sacramento. Okay, Power in Road in Sacramento. Okay, that's where we're at. Power in Road in Sacramento. Let's see here. Where's our search button here? There we go. Boom. So we want to type in 8250 power in row. It should pop up already, Sacramento. Then we want to go to it. Okay. And this is what you, these are the tools you use to do an estimate. And mind you, you can't do it for interior work, right? Sometimes you just got to go out there and look. Let me make sure that's sharing. Okay, perfect. So now we got this here, right? We're going to. So, um, I don't think this is the entrance here. This looks like more the entrance over here. So let's see here. So, okay. So if you see here, this is what this is. This is the place we're bidding on here. See, we got some existing uh, striping here all throughout this parking lot. And let's look here. Let's look at um, our PDF here. See if we can match some stuff up here. Okay. Booms come out here. So now, if you see here. Okay, I'm back on my uh, my my other share page where I'm looking at uh, the plans, right? And I'm trying to match this this image up. Now that's how we're looking at it. Okay, that's the building, the parking lot, the other parking lot, parking lot over here. This the sidewalk area, so we can kind of see that, right? So um, let's look here. Um, looks like. This is that overhang here. This is the beginning of the sidewalk there. So, so it looks like we're probably going to be doing a ramp here. That's what that sort of looks like there. Okay. Looks like we're going to be doing a ramp there. Looks like it, you know, I'm not certain yet. 
Maybe, maybe it's on a different side of the building. So let's get an idea on that. Okay, parking lot, this, that. This here, let's see what some of these legends are. All right, so 12 is what, what is 12? Okay, utility, protecting place. Um, they don't got a slice through. Okay, let's go back here and share. Okay. I could be there on that, that in there as well. Okay. Could be on this corner as well. See these little ridges here. So that could be right there too, right? That could be. That looks like that. It's it's on. Oh, hold up here. Let me make sure I'm sharing on a new page. Oh yeah, I'm on it. Okay, so it can be here on this corner here. So let's go back. Let's look at this here. Right. So here is right here. So see how we found that area there. Let's see if we can see that uh, structure there that they don't want us to touch here. All right, so here, and then it looks like here's the structure here that they don't want us to touch. Let's see if we can see that part on our plans, this one right here, this area right here, okay? Hopefully you can see that there. Let's see, share. Okay, that's that area right there, if you notice, okay? And we got some other areas. So we gotta do, so in this area, we got three, right? So what's three? So three is remove existing truncated domes and underlaying pavement and base course if encountered, right? So the one of the things that I know, okay, that you'll have to find out by reading the specs is the way Walmart works is that if there's base there, then you're good. If there's no base there, then you have to import base. So I always include base in my bed. Always, always include it in there. Uh, you just never know what you're going to run into. 26, what's 26? What do they want me to do in 26? 26, protect and place existing concrete pavement. So they don't want me to remove the sidewalk. What is three? Remove existing truncated dome and under, oh, we already went over that. Okay. So I need to remove that out of there. So look at this here. So we're here. Okay, so uh, one of the things you know, one of the things you have to realize is that what time of day will you be working on this project, right? Now, you know you're, you're next to a loading dock area, right? Now, if you're working during the day, and as you know, working during the day at a Sam's Club, a Walmart, a Home Depot, there's just tons of traffic. So if you're going to be working during the day, or you don't know when you're going to be working, you need to factor in the worst case scenario, okay? Don't assume that you're just going to have free range just to do everything. Try to get as much information as you can on those existing conditions during those work hours because they will determine your bid. They will slow down your production, right? If you just plan on going in there and just banging this thing out, completing it, then and, and it's not that, you're going to get that job because every other contractor that's bidding on this understands that, that, uh, uh, that, that floor of construction, the order of construction that it'll be night work. They may need to pay a little bit uh, additional work. Uh, uh, they only can do certain amount of work during a certain amount of time. Uh, uh, this may only be available during a certain part of the project, things like that. So, you know, I have the advantage because I've done projects like this before. I know it's night work um, and I know I don't have a whole lot of traffic and uh, I kind of know I have a free range of, of doing things. Now, next thing is, is that where's the construction yard is going to be at, right? Where can you house your equipment? Do you have to pull it off every day or can you keep it on, on, on site all day? That's additional move-ons that you need to take into account, right? For, uh, someone driving to a job site in a dump truck with a trailer, pulling a, bo a bobcat or a skister or, or backhoe, it's going to take longer to, to get to a job site than that person leaving that equipment there and driving a car to a job site, right? It takes a different setup time. And uh, you got to come for different things within that time frame. Okay, so you may have to factor in at least an hour overtime every day, right? Two hours overtime every day for those individuals, depending on the order construction for 
that project. Okay, it's a lot that goes into it. So uh, we're going to be doing this section here, right? Mm. Right, not totally clear, right? But now we know it's a small section here. So uh, uh, what we're going to do here is bear with me for a minute while I go and find a similar type estimate. Okay, bear with me. So what I do is I go back into my documents because I, I do uh, all my estimates and I document them. So I'm going to go find a Sam's Club estimate that I did. Now, the last Sam's Club estimate I did, um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't land it. I didn't land that that Sam's Club. And um, and one of the reasons why I think I didn't land is because that contract, that general contractor, had a contract already out there. He just didn't like the contractor and he wanted me, he wanted to give me the additional work. And he was basing my price based on their work, uh, which didn't match. Now, like when you're doing work for some general contractors, they like to, especially large box stores, they will lock you into a lower labor rate for extra work. And that's what happened on this situation. So the existing contractors locked in a lower rate for extra work. They're given extra work and they give a price. Now, the, the trick here is that if you're the, if you're the existing contractor and you're given that extra work, you have to find ways to make money on that extra because you're locked in at a lower uh, labor rate. So you, you make sure you tag in everything that you can tag in because if I come in and give you a number uh, versus that existing contractor number, mine is going to be high because I'm coming in not locked. I, I, don't, I don't have to uh, be locked into the same lower rate that your existing contractor have to be locked into. I just come in with my you know, $75 an hour rate, $55 an hour rate to charge you versus this contractor charging your locked in rate. So when they compare those numbers to, of course, that person is a lot lower than I am. So you're not going to get me to be there because I'm not, I don't have to oblige to what that contractor has to oblige to. Okay. So that's what kind of happened there. They were comparing my numbers to his extra work numbers and they just wasn't going to make sense. I tried to, I really did, but I didn't, I, I know what those, I, I have locked in rates for Walmart too, which are lower rates. But anytime I'm in a situation like that, I don't use those rates. There's, there's no money in that. So I just try to uh, be as lean as possible uh, uh, to give it a shot at getting at work. And I, I thought I was going to get it, but I didn't. Anyway, so let's go here to Uh, Sam's Club. Let's see here. Let's see, I'm trying to pull up my uh, my estimate system with the Sam's Club. That's what I'm doing right now. So bear with me. All right, I'll show you something here. We'll just go over real quick with this. Uh, so this one here, what you're looking at here is actually my bid to um, to um, uh, to the general, and I'm bidding against. I'm I'm bidding to one of the same generals that I'm showing you here, Shames Construction. Okay, um, and if you see here, this this was my proposal here. I see it was done. August 29th, 2018. Okay. In August, I, I lost that, you know. Um, oh, maybe I didn't lose this one. I'm not sure. It's Ontario. I landed, he gave me one in uh, Corona and Ontario. One of them I didn't land. I, I don't remember. There's so many darn jobs here. But um, this is what I write up here. And this is what I'm going to write up for this one, too. So here it is. I have a similar Sam's Club. Most likely it's a similar type work. I may have to 
uh, edit this slightly because there may not be a ditch, uh, V-ditch insulation there. It may not be the like how you see light base repair here. So if you see here, uh, my grinding overlay was at 87,000. Uh, I demo existing V ditch, uh, demo existing V ditch um, was uh, uh, 35,000. Uh, light base repair was 6,500. Demo of existing and includes installation of two new shopping cart storage areas was 6,700. Um, they were pretty easy to install. I thought I can get those done pretty good. Remover of tree planters, just the planters, okay? You know those little planters that's in between the, uh, the parking stalls? It's like a little diamond-shaped planter, a little small. Just demo that up, pop that up, uh, and I was just gonna remove that. Uh, there was another concrete stoop in the back, so my total bid was $139,171.51. Okay, for that particular uh, bid there, and then I have a general conditions page. Okay, where I put, you know, what I'm gonna do, what I'm not gonna do, and things like that. Okay, so that's what that is there. Okay, so let me. Uh, that's not exactly what I wanted to show you. That I wanted to pull up in the estimate. You know. So, um, so I'll do that there. So bear with me here, but that's how the proposal looks. Okay. In raw format there. So let's go back here. Do, 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 do. Bear with me. Um, Sam's cloud. You want to keep your stuff organized. You want to know exactly where to pull your stuff up at, okay? <laughs> okay, so let's share this with you. Let me share. So this is my uh, estimating program here. Oh, I don't hold up here. Hold on here. Let me, let me go back here. Make sure I got the right one here. Hold on here. Okay, here it is. Change the information on here. All right, let's go back to my estimate sheet here, Sam's Club. All right, so, all right, let's look at this here. So, um, oh wow. Hmm, got two of these sheets open that are similar. Let me make sure I'm on the right one. All right, so, um, um, okay, so I got all this here. These are the line items. Now, mind you, for this particular project, you have to create your own line items. So one thing you gotta make sure is that you read through everything so you have everything listed on your proposal, right? They're not giving you actual line items that you, with square footages that you're gonna bid on. They're just going to, and that's why it's very important that you make sure that you know how to read the plans and that you cover everything on the plans so you can get everything listed on your proposal so they know that you're going for everything that's covered under your work scope. If you leave something out, they could just assume that you're not bidding on it so they throw your bid out because they don't want to deal with someone. Uh, uh, and if you're in a GC position, you'll know what I'm talking about or if you're soon to be in a, uh, more of a GC position where you're hiring subs, you don't want to bring on the sub that's going to do nine of the 10 items because how are you going to find, it's going to be hard for you to find the tub to do that one tenth item, okay? So you want your subs to do everything under their work scope. Everything under their work, you want them to cover everything unless you can do some of this stuff in house. But GCs want to see their subs cover everything and that's what gets, more attention to them to look at your numbers. Don't exclude anything. 
but also too, you got to know how to, you know, look after, you got to know how to read the plans to actually be, be able to include everything on your proposal. Because you really don't know what you're doing, then you missing something could get, could, could be mistakenly taken as you're excluding it. And that's what you don't want to do. So um, let's go back to here. So th this was, was my estimate here, right? So um, here, see here, I got the lead man. I factor this guy in at $30 an hour, right? So I use the lead man, factor him at $30 an hour. And that's all I factor in. So as this bid here, uh, I don't have any, um, I don't have any, um, um, anyone else listed on this project. Like I'm not doing several different pay rates. Okay. I'm doing one person at $30 an hour. You see here, let me make sure you are, uh, this is being shared with you. Okay. So I'm doing one person here, uh, uh, say my supervision is at $30 an hour. Uh, and I just plug that, that number in there, um, for the supervision, two days, four hours a day. Uh, installation of new barriers, another lead man at thirty dollars an hour. So this person is getting paid thirty dollars an hour take home, and I got a labor burden in there at twenty seven percent. Okay, and then let's come down here. If you look here at the top, the top of the sheet here, that shows my um, what this total is eighty seven thousand. Remember that was the same number that was on. The proposal was $87,000. Uh, my profit for that section is $7,998, right? The profit per day is $2,600 per day and uh, a mess estimated of uh, three days. And, and the three days is uh, it's funky on the calculation on that. So got to be careful on realizing if it's three days or not. Okay. So I got uh, things plugged in here, signs, ADA signs, ball yurts, pipe, concrete bags. Um, also have, um, uh, this is, looks like more of a sub. So I got subcontractor price in there. That's what I factored in. Uh, factor in some tonnage on a uh, base, things like that. Then my totals come here. Uh, another thing with this bid sheet, that's that's really good here is um, and I, I I also sell this estimate sheet to to um, different folks out there use use my estimate sheet to come up with their numbers on this sheet here you can see each section has things laid out like this is the labor section and they're from the grinding overlay sheet right the demo sheet here the install new V this sheet light base repair sheet, install shopping cart sheet, remove a tree planter sheet, concrete stoops. So in, it, in each section, you have a different number for your labor, your labor burden, your raw materials, your rental equipment, your equipment owned, your truck and fuel, your ready mix, as far as concrete, dirt, base, slurry, things like that. Um, your subcontractor numbers here, uh, your per diem and hotel numbers are here. And, and, and that's what's included in there. So um, uh, this, this estimate system is, is designed for any type contractor, okay? And, uh, and, and I just wanted to show you that at the end. And once you come up with your numbers here, you can give a discount percentage up here if you wanted to. You know, I was in the market of giving discount percentages when I did a lot of work for SoCal Gas and stg and &E. they always wanted a discount. You had to show a discount, mandatory. So, um, hold up, let me, let me get this here. Tyrone. Hey, Deborah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Uh -huh. Well, um, and I didn't even know she requested it until yesterday. I
Right. I they don't have a um a release from from Robertson's. I know, I know. What she's telling me, she's saying that I need to re receive a release from Robertson's from them. And I was telling her they don't have, they didn't use Robertson's. It was out there for one day, you know? So she has, well, that's, I just told her, I said, they don't have one from Robertson's. She was like, oh, well, I need their release. I was like, look at your emails. You, you Ben got their release. Ben. Well, it's just, um, you know, now you see, she, she just jumps on it at different times. And then when she's ready to jump on it, then she would, you know, tag you in different information that she needs throughout, I, I guess, maybe to buy herself some time. But, um, um, like, I, I sent over all my releases. I got my release from, from Robertson's, you know, it's sent over and from Greer. Yeah. Right. She should be, she should be cutting out check. Right. Right. I sit there. And... Right. No, no, I get you. No, no, because it is a little tricky with her, you know, and then. And then, you know, I had to tell her. So she was saying, hey, the draw that you're getting. Oh, I already told you this, where she could buy the, the 129 and the 19 grand. So she brought 129,000 with the 19 grand together. And I actually, you know, it's, 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 it's all in one, including 129,000. So we should get this check tomorrow, you know. Um, your agent is not, not on top of it, huh? <laughs> Right. Right. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right. It, it, I think she'll get it to you. No worries. I, I think she'll get it to you. We'll... we'll <laughs> Cause mine is mine is Tina at Robertson's, and she's uh, uh, she's a bit touchy too, you know. I have to really keep it real sharp with her, and that's it, you know. And 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 as long as I keep it sharp with her, she's good. But um, but we should get our check tomorrow. We we'll be able to get. We'll be able to be good. I'll push her. Don't worry about it. Uh, because the reason why she's really on it now, I already contacted her boss. Cause she was just taking too long, you know, she was taking too long to get involved, you know? So if I need to contact her boss to override this, then that's what I'll do. Okay. Yeah. That's what she said. She only has a signer. She only had a signer. She said she, her next signer date is Thursday. So I'm not, I'm not allowing that day to pass and for her to, yeah, she she owes me, you know, just too much money. She owes me on, on seven jobs. So um right, right, it's 127,000. Yeah, the, the total job was 233. 129, right? See, yeah, it's your money. So you correct me on the exact amount. 129,000, almost 30,000. Yeah, 130. Right, right. So I need to, she needs to get that so you can get that, and then I can get my balance too as well. So Right. Right. Ten four. Okay. Yep, I'll see see you on it. Oh, I ain't got time for that. I gotta get my money. I ain't worrying about your feelings, you know? It's it's not yeah, I don't care. I don't really care about her feelings. <laughs> Listen to this. Deborah. Deborah. If she don't give me my money, I'm going to go to her boss 
And if he don't listen, then I'm going to go to Walmart. Okay. Right. So I'm going to be friends. I'm going to, I'm going to be friendly in the beginning, but if you're not, I, I need, cause see, this is the thing that I think a lot of uh, general contractors don't understand. I don't get paid weekly. So the longer you take me, the longer it takes for you to pay me, the more that money costs me. Right. The more bills come in, the more, more things I got to pay now. Right. So, don't do so. Oh, tell <laughs> tell him I'm gonna call him too. I'm gonna. <laughs> He's a little guy though, Deborah. You can handle him. Tell him. Tell him you can. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> right. All right. So we should get it tomorrow. Don't. 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 All right, too far. Okay. You are. So, um, I'm sorry. There was a time. I, I told you guys I may have a phone call come in. So, anyway, um, let's go back to here. Let's go back to the plan section here. So anyway, so we got a, a sidewalk here uh, that we're looking at. Um, also, too, we got a large area here with existing conditions and another repair plan. So we're looking at um, uh, what we're looking at here is what's existing and how we need to uh, repair this area here. So that's all here. So we're clear on that, okay, on both of those sections there, right? Um, here we are, uh, here, there's a, uh, uh, existing conditions and repair conditions. It's laid out pretty easy for us. Okay. And, and what we'll do here is, um, a lot, it depends on how your general contractor wants to see your bid. A lot of general contractors like to see demo under one price, uh, concrete under another price, asphalt on another price. And what we tend to do as subs, which is easier for us, like me, is you'll get demo combined with that section. So I'll do sheet C5. This is sheet C5. So for sheet five, I'll include my demo, my insul my uh, base, uh, my install, and my cleanup. It'll be all included in sheet five price line. Okay, and some generals want you to break that up into demo. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's the, uh, they want you to include all demo for that project on an, under that one item. So, because their customer wants to see it that way, right? So you may have to do it like that. So you need to find out how your proposal needs to look for that general contractor, okay? Uh, this is another section, existing repair. This is, this is, this is real, real, real real simple here okay I love this here love, love this work here so here it is um, looks like this is um, the parking lot here where they're uh, adding some ADA here uh, and then adding a walkthrough sidewalk here it's pretty simple on both oh looks like there's one here probably then they're upgrading it to this here and then you're doing some striping here Okay, eliminate some striping, add some striping. That's good, okay. So it's pretty cut and dry here, you know? A lot of detail sheets tells you about a lot of um, the details on what you're installing, the overview plan, and a lot of that stuff here. So that's, uh, that's really it there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, take a little bit of time, design my uh, my estimate sheet, okay, with all my line items. I'm going to figure out what all my line items are, so you're not just sit up here and I'm quiet and not talking. I'll be able to get more done by pausing this and doing part two. So that's what I'll do. I'll create all my line items, and then we'll go through and we'll start um, actually plugging plugging in uh, each section and uh, and doing an actual estimate, okay.